Well, hi again. Welcome to The Way I Do It. If you haven't been here before, my name is Chris. And I'm located in Jamestown, New York. We recently took a little vacation to the All-American Quarter Horse Congress. It's held in Columbus, Ohio at the State Fairgrounds. I wanted to show this video as a little helpful tool uh, on how to get into the place. If you've never been there before, it's really confusing. Well, hopefully it gives you a guide on how to get through the uh, Quarter Horse Congress and find a parking space. Here's a map you can download from the Expo Center website. When you arrive, you come on I-71 and you will go west on 17th Avenue. It's exit 111, 111. If you're coming from the north like us, it routes you right around and they shut down 17th, so it routes you right into the plaza. This plaza is where you pay for your parking and you pay for your camping. Camping is kind of funny because you pay from today to the end of the month and when you check out, they will refund your money. Uh, the parking is either $25 a day and you have to park what they call north of 17th Avenue, but you're actually north of Gate 1 and the Lausch Building. So you're pretty far north. It's a lot of walking. So I would say if you're there two days or more, $50, pay the extra $20 and get the sticker. You can park on Gilligan or somewhere else. Um, you come in here, there's an exit road to the left for oncoming traffic. That truck there, he's going over to go to the $25 parking area for the campgrounds. And us will be making the turn onto Velma to go onto the fairgrounds where the show is. Coming up here, there is either a fairgrounds employee or in this case, it's a highway patrol officer and he's there to make sure you have the sticker on your car. Nobody turns left here without the, uh, the sticker, the Congress sticker for the month. The fair does not have its own security. Highway patrol are the security. So, yeah, there's no calling the cops because they are the cops. So you come down this, they call it Velma Avenue. It comes down by Kasich Hall. That's the backside of Kasich Hall, which they actually use. They have uh, a couple things in there. Uh, they've had Puppy Alley in there in the past, and they have... Uh, trailer company. So here is your stall office. This is where you check in if you're bringing horses. You really only want to stop there if you have horses. And this is also where you come if you need your camper pumped out. And it's cash only for the camper pump out. But uh, And if you have stall issues, that's where you go for the stall issues. Now that's not open 24-7, so if you have stall issues outside of regular business hours, uh, you would go to the camping office and they can attempt to address it for you. Now here I'm driving down 17th Avenue, but it's actually now part of the fairgrounds. Uh, you can see Celeste right there. That's where most of the big shows happen. For the exhibits, they use Celeste. They use the Taft Coliseum and they use a smaller Cooper Arena. So yeah, we come down here and occasionally uh, a lot of vendors park along here, that's why it fills up. Occasionally you'll see some new vehicles. This year's kind of odd because not a lot of new trucks available. Now here we're coming to, this guy's probably going to lunch or coming back from a lunch. You gotta be careful here. So this is how you get on top of the Gilligan Barn. You can either go in the left or right lane, it doesn't really matter. It's one way. When I've been here for Equina Fair, also it's one way. Now you look over here, here's the campground. They, they call it the uh, Corbel Campground. So you can see to the left is the west, to the right of that road is the east, and then there's the north. Probably holds a few hundred campers there. And this is a nice place. And this will fill up for your 
show in the middle of the month. Just a little bit early, but it will fill up. A lot of trucks. A lot of trucks with uh, packages. A lot of white trucks from Texas and Oklahoma. Not sure how many cars this will hold, but it holds a lot of cars. And of course, below it is the Gilligan Barn. And this is this was a place to be, I guess, years ago. Because uh, years ago, they used to have a tent set up in a parking lot. So there is the Bricker Building. It is the West Entrance Congress Hall. That's where the shopping happens. There is a cafeteria on the north side of the building. A lot of golf cart parking right there. And this is where your Congress Hall is where your uh, your show uh, your show office is in there. They also have AQHA and NSBA and then all the all the shopping. Now if we could see over that building, we could see downtown Columbus. That is the end of the Voinovich building, which in this case is a barn also. They fill it up with a barn. Now, if you've been there for Equine Affair, you know in the Voinovich they have trade show and they have uh, demonstrations. Um, you're looking, you'd be looking over top of the Cooper Arena to see the Voinovich. So we just continue on along here. Now, normally you'd be turning left down here to exit. Um, we have a lot of campers underneath the railroad tracks here now. I've never been on the other side of the railroad tracks, so let's just zip back and see what's back there. Like I say, this is where you normally turn left. There's a sign here to take you out the exit. But we'll go under the railroad tracks and take a look back here. And there's a road that goes this way and a road that goes that way. And you can see some people are actually even camping back here. So some some will store their horses and trailers under here. There's not really a lot of complaints about storage. Uh, they make sure you have the right parking permit when you enter the property. And uh, generally they want the empty horse trailers on the north of 17th, but a uh, few people keep them handy. They have tack in them. They like them a little more secure. So, we'll just continue on down here and go around the O'Neill Building. The O'Neill Building, uh, I've never really been in it, but it's another barn. So, yeah. Yeah, the building on the right here is a maintenance building, and that's not shown on your maps. But we'll come up here around the O'Neill Building. And you can see to the right, that's kind of the end of the fairgrounds because to the right they have the Janus building which is fenced off from the fairgrounds and that's a senior center. Uh, the Denny Hales Arena is right here. Now see there's somebody's keeping their truck that normally should be to the north of 17th. Look at the lope on that. No, no peanut pushers here. You know they're just really easy going great horses. Every one of them. Every one of them have their own kind of great low. So we'll continue around the end of the Denny Hales. This is the south end of the Denny Hales. This is VIP parking over here to the right. Those people pay for the whole month and they get a golf cart. It's part of the deal to park inside that area by the Denny Hales. There's a few empty spaces, probably some to fill back in, but. Uh, yeah, between uh, the 2021 events and the competing horse show, uh, it is down a little bit in the VIP parking, but this, this place is really full. And there's the slide. That's what everybody gauges as a, as a landmark to say, where are you? Are you by the slide? So we'll just head on down. We're heading east, and we'll come to the Ag and Horticulture building directly ahead of us right there. And we'll turn in the way of the North Commercial building. 
So we come by the the old North Commercial, South Commercial, and the Poultry Building. The Taft Coliseum is over a hundred years. It's like a hundred and ten years old. And I imagine these three buildings down here, they're really awesome. Uh, we boarded in the Ag and Horticulture building um, one time when we brought our horse down. And uh, this is really the heart of the fairgrounds down here. I imagine these buildings are about 100 years old as well, and they're open. Uh, this one is not occupied, but you can see people are camping down here. We come down around the south side of the Rabbit Poultry Building. The South Commercial Building is occupied. To the right we have, it's actually a park. It's called the Natural Resources Park. see the name on that North Commercial Building machinist. Now up here in this corner of this Ag and Horticulture Building there is a substation for the Highway Patrol. So this is where they operate out of and we catch back up to the exit road. So this is the exit road. This car is going down the exit road and this is the main parking area for the fair. Um, you can see where they take and put up jersey barriers and dirt and they have a lunging arena which I guess you could ride in too but this is a lunging arena and this arena would be kind of in front of the Buckeye building I guess and it's in the parking area there is another uh, riding arena it's the Buckeye pavilion which we're coming up to you can see it ahead there now the story I saw a few, they used to put up a big tent for additional stalling in the uh, parking here to get all the horses in. And I guess the Ohio Quarter Horse, the story is, Ohio Quarter Horse put pressure on the uh, fairgrounds and said, if, if you can't provide us barns for the month of October, we'll go elsewhere. And so... They buckled and they built this Buckeye Ag Complex with a Buckeye Pavilion on the end. So they got rid of the temporary tents and they put up this beautiful Buckeye building here to your right. So this is the nice new place to be. Although a lot of the old timers, they still like to be in their favorite place, Gilligan or Voinovich or O'Neill. can be a little more private. Now, during Congress, this becomes the Attaquan Building. It's not the Buckeye building, it's the Attaquan building. And Attaquan is, a, I believe, an injectable thing. Now, if you go straight forward and just jog to the right a little bit is the exit. But we're going to go down this walkway, this driveway here. This driveway actually takes us over to, back to the gate three or the main entrance that we came, uh, where we turned onto 17th. And right here by gate three, you'll see the golf cart rentals. Um, all gar golf carts are supposed to have a, a permit. All the rental cars have a permit, but most people that bring their own golf cart don't have a permit. And I, I haven't seen, I, mean, I haven't been there a lot, but I haven't seen a problem. Uh, they just don't want gators and all kinds of other big devices. Now, this is a, a camping office. This is where you get your refund when you check out if you have a problem with the electrical or the water system. Um, if you have uh, stall issues too, I guess they'll address stall issues because sometimes this camping office, I'm not sure if it's the camping office is open or the stall office is open. But, uh, when one is closed, the other one can try to address the issues. Yeah, they give you your refund. So the day you check out, you just go over and with your camping permit, and they give you a refund right back on your card. Used to be cash. When we went there uh, and stayed on the grounds a couple years ago, we paid on a credit card, and then when we checked out, they actually gave us a handful of cash.
it's a different way of doing things, but it's what they've found to work. And it is independent of the Ohio Quarter Horse Association, as are the concessions. Concessions are run by a company called Cox. And so all the food, all the camping, that is all uh, Expo Center. It's not Quarter Horse. But they make a ton of money. They make a ton of money for them. When we got here, this place, now this is the walkway from Celeste back to the Attaquan building. So all the horses go back and forth when they're showing. Now we see some empty spots, but when we came uh, three days prior to this, this was virtually empty. It was a little scary, but all the, all the reining and roping people had left, and they were coming in with the pleasure people and the hunt seat people. So, uh, yeah, we'll just go on down here, just trailer after trailer after trailer. Uh, the outer edges have motorhomes. And people all just have to get along. Hopefully you don't park on a hose. Hopefully you don't unplug somebody's electric. You can see there, that building there is the Ag and Horticulture building. We're coming up on the, uh, yeah, there's the Ag and Horticulture building there to your left. And we'll just uh, go straight ahead down here, back to this road. And uh, there's the slide again. And this is the area we got lucky enough to camp in. Um, over to the right is the gazebo and uh, you'll see the there's a Taft Arena and there's the administration offices for the ground see how people just park on the grass here they've got outlets and water available for them and those are really nice places to park if you're going to spend two or three weeks just get your camper leveled up and you you got a nice grassy area and they're first come first serve so yeah, this is a beautiful Voinovich building. And here's a little added. This is like the midway, the food court. This is between the Congress Hall and the Celeste Center, or the Bricker building. If you've been there for Equine Affair, this also is where you will find uh, food. And I believe the food concessions are all run by the, the fair. You get your cream puffs over there to the right and your brats. All kinds of food. There's Asian food, there's, there's pizza, there's coffee. I didn't see any Texas uh, cowboy stir fry, but I did see the, the, uh, the ribs. There's more pizza, there's a couple pizza ones. Well, yeah, I hope you found that useful. Um, it still may be a little confusing because it's a big place, and I just kind of made a little loop with my golf cart and uh, I, I was driving a cricket golf cart so uh, it was kind of quiet but uh, yeah hopefully you found that interesting and I appreciate it uh, give me a like um, subscribe it won't do anything for you but it's going to help me um, but uh, yeah I appreciate you watching and that's the way I do it